Good evening, precious and beautiful people. How are you tonight? Uh, we are cold here, going about going down to about 27, 26 degrees tonight. Uh, we still got ice. Well, it was ice. We still got ice on the sides of the road, but the roads melted day today. Had a great day. Uh, was able to be in fellowship with a couple of decent, peaceful people that we had to go rescue out of uh, a very poor situation. Uh, it was the camper that I told about before that we pulled from the one trailer park to another temporarily, but the temporary position ran out on them in a quick manner. Uh, they've been struggling and struggling to trying to get out of the miry clay, and uh, so God finally sent their rescuer today. Uh, got a call this morning saying I need to get this camera out of here today uh, And these people are treating us very mean uh, We don't know why they are our family and uh, So there was an urgency the urgency there So I raced over there and we got the camper got them over here got them out of that situation so, <laughs> It was such a beautiful thing. It was such a beautiful thing. I'm talking beautiful. So we got back over here, got their camper set up out there, got them some water set up, got them some electricity. Uh, uh, gonna get the rest of it hooked up. And the uh, husband of the couple said, it's so peaceful out here. So much different than where we were before. So I'm so thankful that we were able to pull them out uh, of the Myri clan, help them. So we're still gonna help them uh, find work and find uh, a way to get um, back on their feet. Uh, one blessed thing about it was the, uh, the husband of the couple uh, told me a story about uh, how he did ministry before uh, and he wanted to go into prison ministry, so it was a great blessing to be in the company with him. Uh, very wise man, I think. He has a lot of intelligence. Uh, you know, uh, just a great guy all the way around. Uh, told me told me a story about uh, being in, he went to a black folk church um, with his mother one time, and, and uh, he sat down in the, in a chair or a pew or something, and this uh, black lady slapping upside back of the head said, Boy, we stand up in this church. <laughs> and so, uh, that's part of my testimony tonight. I want to talk about that a little bit. So, it was a blessing, uh, and it actually was, uh, I'm going to give my testimony at the end. So, it was a confirmation, him telling that about his great grandmother uh, was a blessing because I'm going to talk about my great grandmother and one memory that I have with her as a child. Uh, I stand here today, I assure you, I've heard about over the last 20 years, I've heard so many people say, you know, if it wasn't for my grandmother or my great-grandmother's prayers, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I, I, I believe that. I believe my great-grandmother prayed very much for me uh, because she took me to church. And that was awesome, wonderful. Thank you, great-grandmother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for... Uh, allowing me to know you, hallelujah, glory be to God. So tonight, the 20th broadcast, I come to talk about things. Oh yes, the husband of the couple actually prayed in my kitchen over the evening meal. What a blessing that was. You know how long it's been since I heard anybody pray over a meal? Anyway, that was awesome. Anyway, so, great, that's Awesome. Thank you, Father, for the company. Thank you for the people to take care of and host for and uh, love on. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Um, I've, I've flopped the broadcast tonight. I'm going to teach about praise and uh, worship first, and then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have the song last. And hopefully... Praise the Lord, I got the CCLI license. Yeah, we got a number. Ooh, glory be to God, we got a number. Actually got two numbers. We got the license number, and then we got the streaming live uh, number. Streaming live plus. 
number, we have the plus, plus, we have the plus, praise the Lord, we have the plus. Excuse me, I want to drink the water, please. So we have the plus, and I was very uh, like uh, like a cow at a new gate. If you know that phrase, you know that uh, most cows won't go through a new gate that they don't know uh, that is there. They have not been there yet, and so most cows will run up to the gate and they'll stop and they'll look. And you gotta get them. You gotta come on, come on, get through the gate. So that's the way I am. I'm kind of like a cow at a new gate with this music stuff. I'm going, what do I do now? What do I do now? And the Holy Spirit's behind me going, come on, let's go, let's go. And uh, uh, learn about it, learn, learn. And I'm like, okay, so lead me to somebody that can teach me about this stuff. And so sure enough, my landlord, he, uh, he goes to church pretty much every Sunday, faithful. Uh, he's a very genius guy. He has a brilliant mind. Uh, and he knows about music. He actually does sound down there for them uh, at children's events. So praise the Lord. I, I mentioned it to him um, just uh, yesterday. And before I even knew it, he had it pulled up on the computer going, Hey, is this it? Is this it? I was going, Oh, yeah. He said, and so he clicked the song. He clicked over here on the left, clicked this over here, clicked that. And he said, and then he clicked the song and the song was playing. And I was like, well, look at that. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Thank you for leading me to this man that taught me, uh, I hope, what to do. So, anyway, got to get the song list. So, the Holy Spirit said that I could do a teaching on praise and worship uh, tonight of why people lift their hands, why people kneel, why people close their eyes, why people just sit there, why people jump up and down. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm a jumper. I like jumping. The music, if the music is uh, jumping, and I'll, I'm a jumping, I like to jump, and uh, just like that. Um, so, let me set up here. I uh, also am going to purchase some CDs that I had before. This is Paul Wilbur, Holy Fire. Uh, I had it, but the CD is in a stereo that is someplace else. That's all I can say. The CD is not here. This is just the case that I am so sad about it. But the Holy Spirit has given me authority to buy a new CD set. So I'm going to buy Holy Fire. Ah, love that album. I want to get his ultimate collection. Woo! Yeah. Love it. And then I want to get Paul Wilbur Live. A night of extravagant worship. If you've heard Paul, Wor Wor Paul Wilbur lead worship, uh, you know he is anointed vessel of God to bring us into the presence of the Lord. And what a wonderful job he does in surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Uh, such unity. So, so many musical instruments coming together. So many beautiful voices coming together. Man, the voices. Oh, wow. Just beautiful instruments. And so I'm so excited I get to get me some music again. And that way I know for sure I can find the music I want to, to play. And all I need to do is report the song that I play from Paul Wilbur on the CCLI site and glory be to God Paul gets a little bit of money and we get some anointed music to worship Jesus with so tonight uh, let's talk about the snow and ice that's been fun it's a lot uh, difficult to drive on but it was fun did you like the videos glory be to God so uh, I've been I've been dealing with that and it's uh, it's still slippery in places, but most of it would be gone tomorrow. Hey, glory be to God. I always love seeing the snow and ice. So, true worship for the Lord comes from the heart. Because God is spirit, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
John chapter 4, verse 24. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. John 4, 24. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. You can't be in the spirit if you don't know Jesus Christ. Period. So you can't worship Jesus if you don't have the spirit. And you can't worship Him in truth because you don't know the truth. Alright. Number two. Worship is only, only about Jesus. Ever. I don't care what you do it. I don't care what song is playing. If the song is not about Jesus, you're not worshiping Jesus. Get you some music that lifts up Jesus and then you can worship Jesus after you've, you've gotten into the Spirit. How do you get in the Spirit? You get born again. The sinner can't worship Jesus. He's got to get born again. she got to get born again. So, the book of Luke, chapter 19, let's see what worship looks like. Worship can't be stopped. When you meet Jesus Christ, you're not going to do anything but want to worship Jesus and praise the Lord Jesus. Woo! I remember when I got saved, Lord be to God, I was ready to go scream at Jesus. The book of Luke, chapter 19. The book of Luke, chapter 19. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 29. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 29. Going to 40. Wow, we're going a ways. Hallelujah. We get to read some word. Woo! Verse 29 of Luke, chapter 19. When he, Jesus, approached approached Beth Page or Beth Page and Bethany near the mount that is called Olivet, Jesus sent two of the disciples. Verse thirty, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, there, as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one yet has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. Verse 31. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say, the Lord has need of it. 32. So those who were sent went away and found it just as Jesus had told them. Verse 33. As they were untying the colt, its owners sad said to them, why are you untying the colt? 34, they said, the Lord has need of it. 35, they brought it to Jesus, and they threw their coats on the coat and put Jesus on it. So what are they doing? Oh. Tori, hi Tori, sorry, I can't talk to you right now, Tori, I love you, Tori. I gotta, I gotta go, Tori, sorry, I'm gonna close this deal, thank you, I love you, Mwah. Anyway, first, what I just read, verse 35, they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their coats. They took off their coats and they threw them on the colt and then they put Jesus on it. So what did they just do? They just lifted Jesus up onto a throne. Okay, so when you worship Jesus, you're lifting him up on a throne where he is king of kings. I need a drink of water, please. So true worship is lifting Jesus up. So they set him on this colt. They're really excited. They get to see the Lord. 36. As Jesus was going, they were spreading their coats on the road. So they're still worshiping Jesus. 
They're laying their coats, their own filthy rags on the road before Jesus. Praise the Lord, it comes Jesus, Lord, and God, it comes Jesus. 37. As soon as Jesus was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen. Glory be to God, we're praising Jesus for the miracles. Woo, yeah! Here he is, here's the man of God. Woo, glory to God, here he is, Son of God. So they're praising God joyfully for what they have seen. Shouting, verse 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. So here comes Jesus in the name of the Lord. He's our king. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 39. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. What? Verse 40. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these disciples become silent, the stones will cry out. So here's Jesus, he's king of kings, and he says, if the true worshipers don't worship and praise me, they with stones will cry out. Because your heart is so stone cold, you can't praise me. You don't know who I am. You're blind. So when you see people that can't worship Jesus, they're blind. They're stone cold. Jesus is making an analogy there. They're going, hey, look here, be dignified. Tell these people, stop praising you. Jesus said, these people don't praise me. The rocks don't praise me because you're not. Okay. Psalm 22, verse 3. The book of Psalm. Verse 22, chapter 22, the book of Psalms, chapter 22, chapter 22, verse 3, 3, 3, yet you, God, are holy, O you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Now you may be thinking, well, that's Israel. But yeah, it was Israel. But now in the New Testament, we've been engrafted into Israel. So we are part of Israel. So the Lord is enthroned or he is lifted up and set upon a throne when we worship. He inhabits, he sets upon the praises of his people. So if you're praising him, you're lifting him up and he's being set on a throne. He in, is enthroned on the praises of his people. The King James Version, I believe, says his people. Anyway, that's a phrase. He is enthroned. He's lifted up and set upon a throne in your heart. Because why? Commandment number one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Very number one thing. When you worship Jesus, you're lifting him up onto a throne and making him your king. Number three, when you worship Jesus, you set your mind on him. You do nothing else with your mind except you set your mind on him. Why? Because the Bible says, In Colossians chapter 3, 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 verse 2, 2, verse 2, set your mind on things above. Not on the things on the earth. So, when you worship Jesus, you set your mind on Him. Set your mind on things above. Not things down here. 
Okay, you're not worshiping your new car. You just got parked in the garage. You're not there praising God because of the new car. If you are, you're worshiping the car. Not God. It's all about Jesus. Not a car. Or a new suit. Or a new hat. Or look at what I got. And set your mind on things above. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 26. Isaiah 26. I need a drink of water, please. Isaiah chapter 26. 26 verse 3. 26 verse 3. My Bible reads, The steadfast of mind, steadfast of mind, you, God, will keep in perfect peace. Why? Because he trusts in God. We trust in God. Okay, we put our mind in God and we trust in him. The King James Version reads, uh, He keeps them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him. So we want our mind on Jesus when we praise and worship Jesus. We don't want to be thinking about uh, what we're going to eat for lunch when we get out of church or whose neck we're going to hug. Worshiping Jesus. Woo, glory be to God, we're worshiping Jesus. All, oh, everything, all on Jesus. Everything. You're lining yourself up with with the Spirit and, and you're opening yourself up to worship Jesus alone and surrender. So, you keep your mind on Him, He'll keep you in perfect peace. We keep our mind on things above or on things below. The lost person, a sinner, cannot worship Jesus until they are born again. Because they're not of the Spirit. John chapter 3. Those that are flesh, born of the flesh, is flesh. Those born of the Spirit are spirit. And I just showed you, taught you we need to worship Him in what? In spirit. Not flesh. John 3, 6. John, the book of John, chapter 3. Calm down, anxiety. Oh, here comes a rhyme right on time. John, the book of John, chapter 3. Verse 6. 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Flat out. Divided, that's divided. That's the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. The Word of God is living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides between the soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and is a discerner between the, the heart. It discerns between your heart and your flesh, your soul. So, you can't worship Jesus until you're born again. Let me check this one out. I'm not calling it out. I may not read it. No, I'm not going to read it. Sorry. Moving on. Number five. The spirit realm is from the mind up. Not down. Your flesh is from the eyes down. Your mind needs to be in the spirit. I, mean, I just showed you. Set your mind on the things above. Mind up. Flesh down. You want to forget the flesh down.
What you set your mind on during worship is what your soul is worshiping. What your mind is thinking about is what you're worshiping. Put your mind on Jesus and forget the flesh. Forget what you're going to eat for lunch. All right. Three, four, five, where did six go? I lost six. You know six? Well, we'll make up six. Oh, there's six. <laughs> Hello, six. Worship is not a bunch of out of control stuff. A bunch of nonsense, not a bunch of jumping around, acting goofy. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. As you've seen in this ministry, when the music plays, the anointing comes, and it puts me in a stillness. It puts me in a moment of, I, you just don't want to move. And, and the Spirit comes on, and the tears start flowing, and you're such an awe. And you know, I up, jump around, doing a bunch of hoopla hoppa, you know, and laughing and goofing around. Now, I'll get to that. Hang on, hang on. See? There's a story in Leviticus. I have marveled at this story for a long time. Such an awesome story of God. And how awesome He is and how holy, holy He is. I'm going to show you something here. If you'll see it in your mind, in the spirit, you'll understand next time you go to reverence Jesus in worship, you'll know you're not going to be jumping around doing a bunch of crazy stuff because you're going to get... Yeah, let's go check it out. Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. Two sons of a high priest of a priest named Aaron. Remember Aaron? He walked with Moses, was his assistant. Remember Aaron? He had two sons. Verse 1 of Leviticus chapter 10. Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans and after putting fire in them, placed incense on it and offered strange fire. They offered strange fire. Before the Lord, which God the Lord had not commanded them. So they went and took what they thought they could play with, which was holy, and tried to give praise and worship and jump up and down and all around and do what they wanted with it, and it wasn't right. So guess what? They got judged. With what? The fire. Verse 2. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them. And they died before the Lord. Verse 3. Very important verse right here. Listen. Then Moses said to Aaron, It is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I will be treated as holy. Not some common thing. Not like a TV set. Not like a video game. And before all the people, I will be honored. So Aaron, the father, kept silent. He didn't have a thing to say. Because he didn't train up his children in the way they should go. So here they were, dead. Why? Because they thought they, thought they could do what they wanted with the presence of the Lord. Worship leaders, watch out. 
Don't be playing with it. Number seven. Music plays a big part in worshiping Jesus. A good indicator of whether the music worships Jesus truthfully is it, is it about Jesus or not? The book of John, chapter 3. The book of John, chapter 3. Going back to chapter 3 of John. 3, verse 13. Verse 13. No one has ascended into heaven. From the book of John, chapter 3, verse 13. But Jesus, who descended from heaven, the Son of Man... Number 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So if you're not lifting up Jesus, you're not worshiping Jesus. You have no nothing else to even say. Just like Aaron, he had to keep silent. Uh-oh. God wasn't reverenced as holy. He's holy. Number eight. Raising hands. You see some people, they raise their hands like this. I do. A lot. I want to wave at heaven. Hey, hi. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Jesus. Praise you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's a, it's a Thanksgiving thing. Psalm chapter 95. Psalm chapter 95. Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Doesn't say lifting hands, it says let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. So we are giving thanksgiving. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Thanksgiving means in Strong's, ta-da, meaning to hold out the hands in thanks and worship. Stretching out the hands and arms shows surrender. When you're stretching your hands and arms out to God, you're surrendering. You're not bound. You see some people stand like this, like this. I understand, okay? It's, it's uncomfortable. I understand that. But still, they're, they're bound. They're, they, they don't know. They won't. They, you don't know. Just come on. Hey! Anyway, ah, they're bound. It also, raising hands, issues power to the spirit realm. Remember the story of Moses? Exodus chapter 17. Exodus. Exodus 17. Book of Exodus chapter 17. Exodus 17. Verse 8. Verse 8. And Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us and go out. Fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will station myself on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. 
So Moses says, go and fight. And I'm going to stand on a hill with a staff in my hand. Verse 10. Joshua did as Moses told him. And fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ur went up on the top of the hill. So Moses has two helpers. They're going up with him to watch this. As Moses holds his staff. Verse 11. So it came about when Moses held his hand up. That Israel prevailed or won. So he's holding his hands up. It's bringing forth authority and power. Because that's what he said to do, right? Eleven. And when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. So up, they were winning. Down, they were bound. Verse 12, But Moses' hands were heavy. Then they took a stone and put it under him and had him set on the stone. Set him on the stone. And Aaron and Ur supported his hands. So here's one on each side. They're holding his hands up now because they want to win, right? You want to win? Surrender! One on one side and one on the other. Thus, his hands were steady until the sun set. Hallelujah. So Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with edge of the sword. You want to win? Surrender! Number nine, kneeling. I'm getting warm in here. Right, come back. You're going too fast. Yes, the book of Psalm, chapter 95. Went back to 95. I need a drink, please. The book of Psalm, chapter 95. Psalm chapter 95, the book of Psalm chapter 95, verse 6. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Hallelujah. So here we see, we come, let us worship and bow down. Not yet? Okay, not yet. Let us kneel before the Lord. Let us kneel before the Lord. That's where we get kneel. Let us kneel before the Lord. In worship. See that? In worship. Ten, closing the eyes. I like to close my eyes because it closes out everything I see. I don't want any distractions. So when I close my eyes, I'm putting my mind on the things above, Jesus Christ and what He all did for us, setting us free. I'm raising my hands and surrender. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And sometimes when the music moves me, I'm kneeling. That's just me. And whenever it really moves me, I'm excited, I'm jumping. I'm a jumper. I love jumping. I love jumping. Yeah. He took the shackles off my feet so I can dance. So I'm going to praise Him. I just want to praise Him. Woo! <sighs> Keeps out distractions. The enemy loves to distract during worship. You know, you play those songs, the worship songs on YouTube, and you got the commercials, the advertisements. That breaks the anointing. It breaks, breaks the... They're putting your mind on things above because it's putting your eyes and stuff on things below. They love to do that. 
Because the devil loves to break your worship to Jesus. He wants your eyes on things down here. He wants your mind on things down here. What did he tell Jesus during his temptation, his testing? If you bow down to me, I'll give you everything you see. So who are you really bowing down to whenever you're sitting there looking and worshiping for what you got? Woo. You own them tonight, Holy Spirit. You own them. You see what this reads, though. Hang on, hang on. I want to see what it reads. I don't know why I wrote that down. I'm not going to. Anyway. So that's distractions. Just distracting distraction stops the anointing the anointing breaks the yoke that's where I was going with the scripture but we're going to go on number that's number 8 I need number 10 and number 11 anyway where'd my 11 oh there it is I already talked about that one my testimony is that the Lord wants to use me to show worship and praise how to do that and so he used me in uh, churches with, over in the past uh, he have, he would have me go down front of a Baptist church that I was a member in and most Baptists don't raise their hands it's against the rules usually but the spirit breaks rules like that that's just a religious rule it's just somebody's legalism oh we don't raise our hands here brother why not? Hey! Why not? I love Jesus! Why well, You can't keep my hands down. You can't. I've already had my hands enough where I can't move them and call it handcuffs. Handcuffs. You don't know what it's like when you can't move your arms. You're going, oh, I messed up now. Then when you get free and Jesus sets you free, what you going to do? You going to leave them down? Oh, that's great. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, no. No, not me. I'm lifting my hands up. Because they free now. So that's my testimony. He would have me go down to the front and do the true worship and look like, you know, a funny guy to these people behind me, an idiot. Some people think, well, that guy, he's not dignified. Look at him. Let's look at a story that you might not think was very dignified. You might even not have heard uh, of this story. You might have heard this story as David was naked. I heard this story as David danced when the ark came home naked. He was not naked. But he did dance. Hallelujah. He danced. First Samuel chapter 6. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 6. Just behind Judges. First Samuel 6. Uh oh, not Judges. Ruth, sorry. <laughs> Ruth. First Samuel 6. First Samuel 6. Verse 14 of First Samuel chapter 6. The cart came into the field of Joshua the Beshemite and stood there where there was a large stone. And they split the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. Verse 15. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the box that was with it, in which were the articles of gold, and put them on the large stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings to sacrifice sacrifices that day to the Lord. Sacrifice, sacrifices. Boy, that's something to say. Sacrifice, sacrifices. My hand. Verse 16. When the five lords of the Philistines saw it, they returned to Ekron that day. That didn't work. Chronicles. Right? Let me, let me check this out. I know this is sounding right. One of these stories tells David was dressed. 
Check this out. Sorry. I know it looks weird. I've had a little trouble this week with different things. Okay, verse 27 of chapter 15 of 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles. Chapter 15. 1 Chronicles 15. 1 Chronicles 15 and 27. Now David was clothed with a robe of fine linen with all the Levites who were carrying the ark and the singers and Chenani, the leader of the singing with the singers. David also wore an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting and with sound of the horn, with trumpets and with loud sounding cymbals, with harps and lyres. It happened when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David that Michal, the daughter of the soul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and celebrating, leaping and celebrating. And she despised him in her heart. So some people's going to see you leaping and having an exciting, oh Jesus, glory be to God, I done met Jesus. The ark has come home, glory be to God. That's what Jesus did. He went to heaven. He put his blood on there for us. Cleansed us. Now he's fulfilled the ark. Hallelujah. Come home. Jesus has come home. So, some people that watch you and think that you're undignified. Oh, don't raise your hands, brother, in here. Oh, we can't be shouting in here. Oh, we can't be dancing in here. We can be laughing. We can drink water, please. King David leaping and celebrating. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Alright. So, today, the good Lord blessed me with the opportunity to pray for somebody and cast out. <clears throat> what was that? Seizures. Seizures. <clears throat> seizures, cast the seizure out, somebody cast it out, ah, glory be to God, that's what we get to praise Jesus for, hallelujah, we'll do some jumping jack, glory be to God, so we cast it out, some seizure, and cast it out, some cirrhosis of the liver, hallelujah, glory be to God, hallelujah, I'm getting warm, when I get warm, I start losing my mind, because I'm all, all I'm thinking about is I'm getting hot, but I must be on fire, right? All right, glory be to God. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I got to help some people today. Got to pray for a couple of healings today. Hallelujah. Got to share some testimonies about some spiritual stuff today. Such a great blessing to have somebody in the house praying besides me today. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's why we praise you. That's why we worship you. That's why we adore you with everything, our whole heart. Your mind is part of that. So, uh, I pray right now that everybody that heard this broadcast tonight uh, was able to see why uh, they can do what, you know, makes them happy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you want to do some leaping, get excited. You want to do raise your hands, surrender. You want to close your eyes, block everything out. You want to use your mind, set your mind on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Your soul will line up with your mind, which will line up with the Spirit. And wow, then it brings perfect peace because your mind is stayed on Him. So worship, perfect peace. You just, ha. Ah. You hear people say, I feel so refreshed. I do it all the time. Sit in my office chair and uh, I li a certain worship leader I listen to, he'll say, Let's all just lift our hands right now and, and praise Him. And I'll just sit back in my chair and go, Ah, praise you, Jesus. Wow. So, praise the Lord. Got to learn about some praise and worship. And 
how we can be excited for the Lord because the ark has come home. He's brought his blood home. Hallelujah, we got the ark back. Be excited. Going to get some music. Uh, I have still haven't gotten everything together that I want for the night of worship. It's going to be a wonderful night. So this week I wanted to flip everything around and we wanted, I wanted to end with Rhea Sell's song. And so next broadcast I'm going to go right into the worship. I'm not going to talk much. I'm not going to teach anything. I'm just going to turn on the music and let's praise the Lord. So that we can all get our minds on Jesus, surrender, and come. church pew and I'm sure that she prayed me to this point from at that time her prayers has helped get me here but <clears throat> so I was part of the Pentecostal holiness uh, ring for a while and uh, they they dance they you know they don't get all crazy and stuff you know you'll see some of them they'll start dancing around they'll start going around in a circle <clears throat> and another one will come behind them and they just dance and they they hold the hips or whatever, you know, just dance around in a circle. Okay, dancing okay like that. 
uh, and uh, I like I like listening to the black folk music. Excuse my uh, wording. If you don't like that, I'm sorry, but I am <clears throat> very good friends with some black folk, and they sure know how to praise the Lord. You want to go praise the Lord? Go get you some. Uh, go to you uh, a soul church. I'm telling you, they know how to praise the Lord. So, we've left off on a very good note tonight. We praise you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. And everything else gets left behind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love you.